Hello, welcome to another tutorial video. This time we're going to look at Come On, Come Back. Really uh, sarcastic poem, and it's got this kind of light tone to this horrible, horrible, bleak thing that's happening. Um, great amount of ridicule in this, and uh, we're, we're going to go into it, especially actually when I get to this point here in images. I think that's this is brilliant and one of the best poems for actually summing up this whole thing. So we start off with structure uh, as ever and we've got this interesting uh, side note to actually be taken here. It's an incident in a future war so what that's telling us is to imagine this first of all but second of all it's linking it to every other war that could possibly happen and ridiculing all of the elements that will actually bring us to this situation. Um, second then we've got the long sentences. We've got, you can see them just because of the punctuation just to say even here you know we've got this whole stanza without um with only one one comma so that whole stanza there is a sentence and that allows us to get in a load of ideas but moreover it actually reflects the lack of structure that this soldier has within themselves because they have no memory so they have no identity themselves so they don't know who they are what they do and that's emphasized further when her fingers tap the ground she just sits tapping the ground she doesn't know what she's doing we don't get a purpose that's not tapping the ground in and of itself isn't necessarily something that we'd expect a soldier to be doing in terms of a command or trying to tap out a code it could be that she's just passing the time waiting but the feel that we get and the pace that she gets from the rest of the poem doesn't seem like that this person is 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 is, is you know is is sad she isn't just tapping the fit but tapping her hand on the ground you know just waiting for someone she's um she's you know lost herself she's she's probably we can just imagine being utterly fearful that she has no idea who who she is because of the uh, ml5 that's attacked her the enjoyment used all the way through is really interesting because it allows us to hang on so many words and focus on so many words. Um, I'll take this one, for example, has left her just alive. And we'll hold on that phrase of just alive, which I'll come to in more detail later. But it's very powerful. It just reminds us that that's all she is, just this collection of chemistry, really, in biology, just kind of kicking off neurons and firing them. Um, reacting across but she has no idea in a sense of who she is the, the, the biological parts of it are, are, are just happening but there's no person in there it's utterly utterly dehumanizing and utterly utterly sad to think of someone in that in that situation um, and again here we have example the enjoyment her mind is a secret from her as the water and just imagine this that phrase on which she swims which is that phrase earlier her mind is secret from her and it, just the idea of being so distanced from yourself, like a lot of us have the idea sometimes of frustration of not knowing exactly what we want to do or why we do certain things, but having no idea at all, like literally no idea how damning, uh, how damning must that be and how damning must it feel. The punctuation in the structure of all this is really, really important as well because it allows us to get different tones and voices coming through and different paces. So here we have the... Um, dash is used to kind of break us off um, into this really quick list of uh, helplessness a child no an idiot no one without memory so it gets worse as that builds uh, the punctuation here as well where we have the um, uh, quotation marks of the title of the song and the brackets just kind of adding it as a little aside um, an enemy sense and finding the abandoned clothes waits for the swimmer's return come on back come back waiting while and it just gives us a little <clears throat> kind of sideway like a different feel like a different again a different element of what feels like ridicule all the way all the way through this uh, making fun of it and we've also got the question mark here she fears ah me why am i why am i here so although that changes from the third person to the first person the question mark allows us to do that seamlessly because in the question we can pick that up as a different voice so if you look at what little punctuation is used it's actually used to great effect to really create different tones and voices uh, which is important because when we're looking at the effects of war there's so many different voices that are heard and, and moments that are captured and so this allows us to do that in some in some way 
Um, moving on then to meaning, we've got the effects of war and how this person is completely dehumanized, um, utterly broken. And we've got that from obviously the use of ML5, which is interesting just in the way it's written, because it's kind of like some kind of derivative of the, uh, the kind of things that, you know, we refer to weapons or weaponry or, or um, biological weapons as, such as, you know, an AK-47 has this kind of combination of letters and, and, and um, truncated numbers together to actually, you know, give us this sense of something. So here, ML5 is used, or like Zyklone B, for example, another chemical pound uh, derivative name. I'd be interested to find out what Stevie Smith was actually intending by the ML there. Um, memory loss five or something, perhaps it could be, but um, that that's just just a guess. I'm not saying use that in the exam. I don't know what it's what it actually stands for uh, so yeah the dehumanizing eff effects on this she doesn't understand who she is she she she, she lost her memory she doesn't understand why she's actually here in the place etc she's um you know like an idiot she, she strips off her uniform and that's the last bit of identity she has so it's really dehumanizing both in the fact that she has suffered from the war in this way and also in the fact that um, perhaps being in the army in itself was some in some way dehumanizing. Uh, one of the other messages that comes through is that she suffers the same lies and the same propaganda and that's really emphasizing the title come on come back and that's what always makes me laugh because it's such a ridiculous phrase but you know used to such great effect in this um, to actually emphasize how no you won't to actually emphasize in the sorry to emphasize the absurdity of this you know do we all hear the same kind of talk you know your country needs you um only this you know, so many cliches that you can think of with regards to you know to, like time in the army it's just um it's, it's and that's the kind of thing that gets people kind of encouraged and and uh, following orders and, and doing what they're supposed to do etc but um everywhere here's the same thing so she's heard it here and hear her enemies actually playing the same thing again and it's a favor of all the troops of all the armies so it's th the same idea being pushed the same propaganda whatever it is to actually get people into war you know we need to beat the enemy you know they're they're planning to attack us they're planning to this whatever the propaganda is is summed summed up by there by come on come back and uh, the the phrase in itself you know it seems so simple but um, you know you add words either side of it and it means so 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 much more so come on join us come back victorious or come on let's kill them come back winners stuff like this it, it does sum up so much of the the emphasis of, of what you could say um, some of the thrust of propaganda or, or army commands were uh, we move on then to the idea of death, obviously the death of her, but obviously at the beginning here we have the death, of, we presume, of other people who'd actually um, l l lost their lives in um, Australitz up at the beginning. So you, you can pick you can pick up quite a lot of there. And the relentlessness of it is emphasised, first of all, by the tide of the battle, the ebbing tide of the battle, and just somehow the battle turned, they've lost it, but moreover, just in her dead... Um, being reduced to wanting to die here, waiting, uh, sorry, killing herself, you know, jumping into the water to kill herself. We have then the images that are presented to us. And the first one that comes to us is, apart, remember, the major image that I could say for this is absurdity. There's so many absurd things that you could just pick up, but it's such a grey area, sorry, it's so subjective. Like, you could read it in a completely different way and just say, no, this was starkly serious. So I don't want to go into that too much, but if you can see, where this is absurd and you want to talk about it then I would recommend you do so but classical images or things that are much more universal the darkness that comes across so she goes in at uh, midnight when she goes into the water when she's actually sorry found where is it Midnight. yeah there is so it's actually uh, midnight when it actually um, when she's actually in this situation she goes into the dark lake and the waters close above her 
have also got the blackness of her mind. So all those images of darkness and nothingness are kind of indicative of the state of her memory and indicative of her not knowing who she is and, you know, being bleak and dehumanized. Um, we've got this image of everything being against her as well. So right from the beginning where she's lost the war to the point here where she's tapping her fingers and maybe doesn't actually know why she's doing it to the fact that her own memory won't allow her to, to think of anything to the fact that her body isn't responding the way it should as she's staggering as she moves along to the fact that she, um, you know, she wants to kill herself in here to the fact that even as she swims, she's got this light that comes down on her. Uh, the kind of the white of the moonlight actually comes back. Where is it? There we go. Up on the river of the white moonlight, she swims. And that kind of the moonlight, we imagine being a full moon, a full bright moon. And that, again makes her out to be a little bit crazy because we get the idea of the loon, the moon the lunar lunacy and her is obviously she's gone killing herself and she doesn't know who she is so we, we nothing everything's against her and then we've got her own song the one her favorite one is actually being sung by someone who's waiting there to kill her etc etc so everything in this poem is against her so you get that image of just um it's I suppose being a soldier in some ways, you know, you, you can be damned if you do and damned if you don't. Not only in terms of how people respond to you, but just in terms of, you know, you might kill to win. Uh, but at the same time, you, when you kill someone, you, you kill part of yourself. So that, that blackness or that darkness really comes against her. And the last image we have, or the last image I've picked out here, is uh, Van Der View dead. And um, she's actually being cradled by the water um in the swift our current close close embrace she sleeps on stirs not and hears not the familiar tune so there is just this is where she's peaceful uh because we've got the word of the embrace and she sleeps you know rather than it being a horrific death etc she's just held and she's sleeping so she's rested there um language then there's lots and lots to pick up here but one of the ones i want to talk about was i think i just mentioned earlier the just alive it's just that the bare necessity of that here the just alive i think is really powerful because it's uh it refers very well to the dehumanization you know if you get all the things that make you great all the compassion all the love etc you just reduce this thing that is just alive uh we've got this simile yes this list of simile this simile here as a child and i think that's really important and then we've kind of we're supposed to infer these as, as an idiot and as one without memory so all this list of similes here in quick succession really strikes the degradation that she's gone through or the loss that she's got really strikes home sorry the loss that she's gone through um and moreover it just offers us a vivid a vivid image to 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 actually build in our minds and and you know it's not often that you see simile used in such quick succession so it's a very novel and striking uh, way of using the similes and then last in the language I've just picked out that we've got the naming of Van Der View. We just got this soldier, a real soldier with a first name, and you know it's kind of like we know her quite well. But also she's got like a futuristic name in this futuristic time, and um, it, it it emphasizes to us that this is how sorry again to, in my own view how absurd this is because her name is quite bizarre, but um, it's. It allows us to be personal with her. We feel like we know her, we know her plight, we know what she says, but we don't know her thoughts because she doesn't know her thoughts. But we can piece together how she's feeling in that moment, so we can really empathise with her and um, and you know feel feel a great deal of pathos for her situation. So what effects does this have on us? Well, ultimately, it's a very personal story, a very personal moment, which we can relate to a load of soldiers, especially, you know, the suicide rate for, for certain, for, certain uh, for, for um, people who finished certain wars is actually higher than the, the average. So it makes us think about, you know, what, what personal journeys and experiences people go through. It makes us think about how the war changes people. Uh, and a lot of kind of intense situations do that. Prison, I actually one that 
this comes into my mind as well but here we're focusing on war and we just think about the, the dehumanizing process the humanization sorry process and how you know can anyone feel the same after killing someone else who knows um the suicide as well is brought up the idea of you know what people will do to try and get away from certain problems certain issues so all these kind of things are just kind of brought up and remember with the effect on the reader these these what will the effect every time i explain something that's the effect why it was done the effect on the reader is just to show that you're relating to it in a way just to show that you're understanding it you know it's got you thinking about something because generally the examiner is like that just to show your own personal interpretation personal thoughts on on something and how it's how it's um, linked or how it's how you've been excuse me inspired in some way to think about something from a poem that you've studied <laughs>